Camp Podcast. What's good? Uh, What's good? These are your hosts, Andrew Stravers and... What's my name? Ryan. What's your last name again? What's, what's my nickname? De La Weddle, a.k.a. Carp Lord, a.k.a. Bad Girl. A.k.a. that photo you posted on Instagram of that massive fish may have been photoshopped. I've been getting nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> non-stop everybody hit me on non-stop about that one i looked at that a couple times right when you posted i was like is that one of those little apps you use to stretch out the fish in the post in the photo Dude, post? it was fucking massive and first of all it terrifies me that carp can is that a carp yeah it's a grass carp baby that's a mutant fucking canal carp that's like a ten- that's the biggest one i've ever seen that's a like a ninja turtle type situation do you think someone dumped some like bio you know, some biohazard type like green goo in that. That's that fentanyl that fish, baby. It's that fentanyl fish? Yeah, dude. The area that I do, <laughs> I, I saw hypodermic needles like a patch of them go the other day. I was like, these fish are on drugs. You should have gutted it's that fucker gutted. open and, s- and seen what was inside of it. There'd be balloons of drugs. He's on his way to Mexico, baby. He's a fucking... He's, he's just sending them back. He's a, car- he's a carp mule? He's a cartel carp. He's a cartel carp. Carp tell. Carp tell. <laughs> That's a dude. fucking sick band name, dude. Carptel. Carptel and all the merch is just gangster ass fish. Just like an x ray picture of a giant carp and the inside is like needles and shit. Yeah. Dude, it's ghetto. Like where I went, it's so crazy because it's such like a beautiful sport that's so hard to do. But you can also go fish anywhere with a fly. Fish, it's a beautiful sport rod. that you can do in a ghetto canal. Dude, I, I was like watching my back the whole time yesterday. These dudes were, looked like they were going to stab me. It's like. You're walking, you're pretty much fishing in a homeless encampment. Yeah. And they will fucking come up and start yelling at you and shit, and it's weird. It's pretty tight, but uh, yeah, I caught a goddamn monster, and he was like over three feet, weighed so much. I went to go throw him back in. I kind of like misjudged how heavy it was, and he just fucking (laughs) fell and like slid down the little (laughs) concrete thing. I was looking around. This old lady was walking her dogs while I pulled it out, and she, like, I pull it out, and there's a video because I like set my camera up to so I could get a, that picture. Yeah. And you in the background, you hear this old lady go, oh, my God, I was scared. It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you think that's scary? Man, can you imagine if everyone said that to you? I feel good. I feel good about myself. <laughs> I'd feel good. <laughs> We'd all feel good about ourselves yeah. if we heard that all the time. Sorry, I just had three cups of almonds right before I started this, and I'm realizing how there's like almond shrapnel all throughout my mouth. Almond traps? Shraps. Shrapnel. Almond shrapnel. Shrapnel. I always thought it was shrap- scrap metal. Shrapnel. Shrapnel. W- is that with an SH? That's a, maybe an SCH. Who knows? You it go ahead crazy. and. All right, this is a spelling bee. Ryan? Shrapnel. Who I'm looking at Jill for some advice. Uh, S. Well, no, you see, you already lost. Um, H- during a spell, R- it, nope, a- nope. During a spelling bee, you have to say the word first and then spell it. Oh, really? So go ahead. All right, S. No, you, dude. Is this your first spelling bee? No. You, actually, you walk up. You walk up to the mic. I was a fucking you, finalist in fifth grade. You walk up to the mic and you go like this. Hi, my <laughs> name's Ryan Weddle. Shrapnel. S. Can you use it in a sentence? I Scrap my metal. my one of my best friends was sitting across from me, and I was trying to have a conversation with him, and I couldn't understand the fucking word he was saying because he had almond shrapnel in his mouth. There you go. That's perfect. Did we use that in the right context? Yep. Yeah. I don't know how to spell that. Yeah, I don't word. know. To be honest, doesn't matter. Um, I did have a good day fishing yesterday and got that. Big fucking boy that everybody's been fucking asking me about. Saying, is, hey, did you Photoshop that? My dad. <laughs> that my dad, big fucking boy everyone's been raving about. They're like, hey, that that's a real one. Huh? And my dad texts me. He's like, you Photoshop that, right? And I was like, no. <laughs> this is just- That pissed Mouse off. Oh, dude. Because Mouse, Mouse actually. So a lot of people think a lot off. of people think that Mouse Powell is actually on tour right now. But that's just a cover up because what he's really doing is he has started a campaign and an an agenda that he's bringing across the states to tell people that you're not good at fishing, and you're out here basically proving him wrong. No, he's telling everybody that I have hair plugs. Yeah, he's telling everyone that, and that he's trying to push a you're bad at fishing agenda, and yeah. he seems to be failing while you're just out here literally 
catching mutants every day, baby. <laughs> I, I mean, say they can talk, they can talk, they can talk, but I can talk, they can talk. I mean, I'm not seeing any pictures of some giant fucking fish in their hands. That's why I texted the group chat and I was just fucking with all of them. And because I, I posted that, they're like, damn, I'm jealous. That's awesome. Like, good job. That was Hola. definitely the biggest And hoggers. then very quickly, you could see the confidence start to break them up. And they were like, they're losing it themselves. They, were, they started fizzling down and it starts like And then the group chat started sound like this, huh? No, they Nothing. they no, they were talking about like, well, yeah, ever since you started using that new fly, like you you'd be nothing without the fly. I'm like, ah, okay. And then oh, another so, guy so they're blaming it on another your guy gear. would be like, Don't forget that I'm better. Blah and I I was like, Okay, so I sent him a text message back and I was like, Well, 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 it seems to be some tension in the room here. <laughs> I'm I'm sure it is hard for you guys to just accept that I have the largest fish in the entire chat. And in I just history, started I, d- I might have just surpassed all of you in the last two months through hard work and dedication. I hope you guys can feel something as good as it did. And I sent a video <laughs> of me holding up and struggling with this giant fish. I was like, I is hope- that the first time they saw it? I, I, yeah, I, I said, I, I hope one day you guys will feel this. It probably won't be for a really, really, really long time. <laughs> but I hope one day. You guys can get this. Maybe if you start practicing more. <laughs> I love fucking with this. Is those. Mouse in that chat? <laughs> yeah, it's me, Mouse, my friend Bobby, and uh, Mouse's homie Andy. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really funny. I, I really like fucking with them. Um, but yeah, we have we have our own group chat, and it's called Carpe D's Nuts. <laughs> and the, the picture is just a carp. <laughs> Dude, you guys should make your own merch for the group chat. It's like carp is like capitalized. Yeah. It, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, so I went, me and my friend Bobby, who I just is in that chat, we went up to... Uh, is he the one that was at the show? Yeah, he's been to some of our shows. He wasn't at this most recent one. Who's the guy that I met at the Crescent Show? Oh, that was Chris Bear. He uh, owns the shop. Bear Trap. Yeah, he's one of the owners of uh, Pheasant Tail. He was cool. He was really nice. Yeah, he's awesome, man. He's like He's helped me a lot. It's cool like being in this band and like having gone through all these towns, like... Just meet so many people, and I've been getting reached out to. Listen, like I'm posting more like fishing stuff recently. I get all these people that are like either fans of bands or have seen us and stuff, and they like guide in this town. They do fly fishing stuff, and it's like niche enough that they like they'll reach out. And so like I got a homie, and uh, I've never met him. I don't think his name's Steven, and he's out in uh, like Yellowstone area, and he's like, come on out, like, anytime you want. I was Dude, like, I'm going to start hitting people up. I'm yeah. going to start going out there, I think. What's cool, too, is that, like, you got to think, all the years that we spent just focusing on music, there's people that did that with fishing yeah. that are fans of our band that wouldn't know that you are getting into that unless you posted about it. So now that they, if they see something that, like, you yeah. post and like, what the fuck? Like Ryan from Catastro Fishes, they're going to hit you up. Yeah, no, and there's like a cool. bunch of people. I think that Steven dude said he was going to send me some stuff from the fly shop he works at because he guides and he's like, mm-hmm. you know, gets paid to teach people how to fly fish and it's stuff. It's also such a dope excuse for you to just get out and get sun and like it's healthy, you know? Dude. To like be outside like, dude, you were wearing shorts last week and I was kind of blown away at how bronzed your fucking legs were, dude. Dude, they're bronzed. I got nervous. I was like, are those Ryan's legs or is he as... I'm, I'm, I'm almost into the dark side right of the bronze, you know? I don't want to take people down to the dark side of the bronze, but I did go to the dermatologist the other day. He's like, we got to do a little scoop out of your back because uh, this one's a little sus. And I was like... Really? Yeah. Oh, you nice went week. to a skin... You got your skin checked for... Yeah, there's like, uh, there's been a lot of like cancer scares in my family and stuff yeah. that I don't want to talk about on here, but mm-hmm. like, I'm good. So that's all that really matters, you know? No, uh, but there's just been some like scare scare stuff and that got me thinking. I was like, I should just go to like dermatologists at least. I don't think I have anything for like sure. internal, but mm-hmm. um, I hadn't been since I, I did like Accutane a few years ago. And so I went and I was like, there, there was a new one on my forehead. And I was like, this is new and it's growing. And he's like, I never noticed it is under your hair. Is yeah, why? it's under my hair, which oh. is weird because it's like blot. I don't know. It doesn't. I usually like. I just thought that on. was your fucking weird shaped head. dude. It is. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no. And then I like saw one on my back in a mirror and I was like, let's have him look at that. And he, mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, this one's really confusing. It's either, um. It's probably nothing or it's cancer. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Are <laughs> you like, fucking dope. serious? He said that? Yeah. I was like, dope. Uh, and so he's like, I got to go in and get it biopsy. And so I'm not really worried about it. It's just, uh, 
luckily it's yeah. like on the skin yeah i'd mm-hmm. be more nervous if it was like internal yeah um but yeah that's the dark side of the bronze baby you can live that bronze life but are you wearing sunscreen when you go out do you put sunscreen on your face i all that kind of stuff I've been trying to more. I think that's like that really important. Right? Yeah, I, so I, on my face, like when I'm fishing, I always have like a hat on and I put uh, sunscreen on my face. But I kind of like forget about my arms and legs. Like I just don't think about it because I don't burn. So it's like I don't know. You don't really think about it that much. But uh, I, I need to start. Doing I get more. sunburn pretty easy. Yeah, well, that's because you're not living the bronze life like I am. Yeah, if you're living the bronze life like me you wouldn't get sunburned very easily <laughs> no dude so me and bobby we went uh we're like he seemed like he's getting a little fed up with me catching so many carp every time i go out i just catch <laughs> a, one of the biggest fish he's ever seen I, I i will in quotes say this mouse said i think that's the biggest grass carp i've ever seen so swallow your pride mouse it's happening wow. it's happening You're that hurts that demoted. must hurt that must hurt him probably hurts him well he was in uh he was in reno he's on tour right now he texted me, he went fishing out there alone and didn't catch anything. And so he texted the group chat. He started the conversation for the day and he was like, yeah, f- getting skunked out in a different town is wor- uh, feels exactly the same as at, at home. And it was a minute before I pulled in that no fish. Fucking and way. so my response was, yeah, that must suck. And it's me holding this <laughs> fucking monster. <laughs> <laughs> and he That's was just so like, holy funny. shit, I'm so mad. And then he was like, That's leg- legitimately one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. I was like, Yeah, me too. Fucking better remember that, baby. But uh Bob and I we go go we want to go for trout. And so we go to this area around uh Payson and the first time we went together, like we were very new. We didn't know what to do really, and it was like horrible. And we're like, Hey, we've gotten a lot better. Let's go out there. I think it's gonna be like a different story. Bro, this day was horrible. <laughs> I I wake I wake up at four, leave at four thirty a.m., and we start driving up. We get to Payson, stop at McDonald's, and he gets a egg McMuffin. I got a sausage McMuffin. It was actually really good, dude. It probably was. <laughs> it was so good. I <laughs> I don't get them very often, but sometimes when you're in the outdoors you have to eat mcdonald's you got to do it <laughs> yeah dude sometimes when you're joint you're getting bronzed up you gotta if you're living the bronze life you gotta have like a mix something in you, you yeah, know? yeah yeah for sure. uh but yeah so we start driving i was like do you want your sandwich yet and he's like no i'm gonna wait i was like bro i'm gonna eat because we got a long day ahead of us we know this spot is like it was tr- tricky last time um so i started eating he starts going we get closer and closer to our spot he's like all right can you like hand me that and i was like yeah takes one bite shatters his molar <laughs> like in half dude that's and he's like so he's like oh i just broke my tooth and i was like on eggs and i was like i've done that before <laughs> i actually knew exactly what he felt because i've broken my tooth on eggs before too because the place the machaca was, yeah the machaca so there's something in his McDonald's sandwich that fucking shattered his. So like, what was was it? A piece of metal or something? He doesn't know. He spit out the chunk of tooth, and it was like significantly. It was pretty big, and I was like, "Bro, it's that's big, that's bad." And so he pulled over. Was he bleeding? And, and I took too? a picture. You gotta have been bleeding too. Right? No, it didn't hit his nerve. It was just a tooth. So dude, luckily, he's lucky, bro. That could have been so, so painful, dude. I mean, he would have had to like rush back home. I couldn't even imagine two hours of like severe nerve pain. Actually, I did do that. <laughs> actually, you I, yeah. actually, you can't imagine yeah. that. But um, so we start our day. He shatters his tooth. <laughs> Such a good start. We start to going. Tri- I know. All right. So and this I'm, is I'm before- dying laughing. And so we, we so finally get before, to the spot. Are you guys both driving together? Yeah, I'm, I'm in his car. Okay. And so we finally get to the spot. Um, We like get our shit started. You know, I, I, we both just gone to the fly shop and we spent like $100 each in flies. We just want way more than we'll ever need. Mm-hmm. Dude, so I didn't know that everybody goes and they get into the middle of the water and they go up at this spot. Like, so we were walking on the surroundings, which it's not, there's like barely trails in some of these spots. Yeah. Like sometimes it, it's easy to walk and there's areas where it's just, I, I just fell, I started falling into the water and I went and grabbed a branch and it was covered in thorns. Like everything was bad. Oh. Every, every cast I made, every other one would get caught in a tree behind me. And I'm like, I really had to calm myself down. I was like, I was talking to myself and being like, 
you're acting like a toddler. Like I had toddler brain for sure. Like my brain was just like, fuck this. This is so dumb. Like, yeah. Cause you're just so frustrated. It was so goddamn frustrated and we caught nothing. Neither of us. So we're going for four hours out there. We're catching nothing. I didn't even bring regular shoes. I brought fucking vans. So my feet start bleeding and I'm like, dude, this sucks. And we're qu- going through, I lost a hundred dollars worth of flies. Does he have proper shoes? Yeah. He has got proper shoes. Like high, like, well, if you're in the water, aren't you supposed to be wearing like some irrigation boot type shit or like, um, what do you wear? What do most people wear when they're in the water like that? Depends. Like usually you just wear like a shoe that you don't mind getting wet. Kind of. It's like really sometimes like rubber shoes of some sort but there's like certain socks that are good for being underwater and then if you're going to be like really in water then you wear waders which are waterproof full body okay we got we got to talk about this real quick i don't want to take you off track too far but because of your new fucking fishing adventures i'm now getting ads for waders there's pretty sick on instagram and i'm like why the fuck is instagram telling me i want this because Instagram is listening to you talk about fishing. And so now <laughs> Instagram thinks that I want to buy a bunch of fishing shit. Dude, you do. I'm, <laughs> I might just start fucking buying fishing stuff, but not, not going out. Just just wear it. I'm just going to start wearing it. Yeah, you just, dude, it's waterproof. It's Dude, so yeah. If waterproof anything, in and waterproof out. If so. anything happens, I'm good. Yeah, it will be in. If a tsunami hits AZ, I'm good. Yeah, they'll stay out. If you have an internal tsunami... It stays in. <laughs> okay, we're, we'll go back. So you're grabbing so thorny here. branches. I'm grabbing you're thorny off. branches. Every single cast, I'm getting stuck. We're finally eight hours into it now. And I'm like, all right, I've had to replace these flies. I've I got like, you know, two left. And I literally bought way more than I needed. And uh, I was like, I got one cast. Uh, and then after this, I'm going to go. I cast. I fall. And I fall like hands and knees into water. It's it's like the high of 50 out there. It's cold. And I just get up and I just go, yep. And I just walk off and I go straight to his truck and I just wait for him to be done. And I sat there and You're I open up a beer. Over it. I'm soaking wet. I'm freezing. My feet are bleeding and bruised. I have, <laughs> did not wear any of the normal, like right clothes. I yeah. wore jeans and yeah. I'm s- like, it's completely wet. I didn't bring any backups of anything. So I was just like, I had shorts that I changed into afterwards and that was it. And so we go and we're like, all right, we didn't catch anything, but still it's always like nice to be out in nature. Like at the other day, Dude, it, was, for sure. it was a good time. Mm-hmm. We stop and get some food. I go home and when I'm driving home, I'm on the phone with Ma and I'm like, Hey, can you check the dresser for my ring? Because like sometimes at night, if my <laughs> hands like kind of feel like more swollen or something, I'll yeah. take it off and put it on the counter. And she's like, "Yeah, it's not there." And I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> and I lost my wedding ring. Do you think it was when you fell in the water? I uh, so I was at the Biltmore Hotel the night before, and I had done like all the like I had done uh, the steam room. And it gets like really slippery, you know, with all like the eucalyptus shit. I don't know what the steam is, but the sweat as well. It's usually, like, usually it's just like a compound of like a lot of guys' jizz. Well, all the ravens. That's probably were there. the stickiness that it, you're feeling the on, entire, the, on the on the like on the bench and stuff. The entire football team, the ravens were there, so it's th- definitely there. Their jizz. I walked in. I don't know how to do spas. I've never gone to a spa. I don't know anything about it. I'm like, what do I wear into a sauna? I'm like, I thought people go like naked. I just wearing only a towel. I walk in, it's like five of the football players on the Ravens sitting in there yeah. with like swimsuits on and they all just look at me and they all look at each other and then they all just walk out. So I don't know what's going on. Oh my but, God. But um, yeah, I was like, I was so slippery from all the Raven jizz. And yes. then, um, <laughs> An then I went into like teams. the hot tub and then I did the cold plunge. So you that- did a cold plunge? Yeah. How'd that go? It's cold. It's awesome. Did yeah. you do it for three minutes? No. I did it for like a minute and a half, I think. Nice. I That's did still it f- a long time. Oh yeah, dude. I got out. And it was. You feel pretty. Dude, good. isn't it? It's like I was dr- pretty hungover too because it was. It's the like night drugs, after bro. The Halloween it's party. like being on drugs. When you get out of that, you feel so good. It's weird. It's like, but for hours you feel good. Yeah. Well, it's I was like, so I, I was kind of hungover because it was like the, the annual Halloween party I go to every year. Apparently, that the helps before. a lot with hangovers. Yeah. That's awesome. So I don't know if it was there or if it was while I when I fell in the creek, but anyways, I had to 
I have to buy my own wedding ring now, which I wasn't expecting to <laughs> spend like a thousand dollars or however much on a new ring, but now I have to. So that's sick. That's pretty. Ma tight. was stoked. She was so I happy bet she about was it. Excited about that. <laughs> she was really happy. No, she actually was fine. She, I mean, obviously, she, like, she wasn't she's like, like. She's like, it's just weird, Ryan. Like, you keep going on all these trips with like your your friends that are guys. <laughs> well, dude, thank and God now I you, wasn't like. And now you co- like you're going into the wilderness with this dude I don't really know, and you come home with no wedding ring. Like, what's going on? I am so glad I was like fishing. I'm wondering when I if lost... you even fish at this point. Now I now I you might have me wondering. Be sucking a fucking in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> you might just be. I yeah. mean, you, that's the thing is that you guys will never know. We will never know. That's the thing is you guys Does a bear shit know. in the woods? Um, I don't know. Chris Bear? Did you see you? that video that's been going around of a bear just shitting in the woods that someone the got? Worm. And and I don't know. I just thought it was kind of funny that that video like, went viral because of the saying, it's just a bear. there's a bear shit in the woods. Have you seen the videos of the tapeworms that come out of bears' butts? No. God, that's disgusting. Dude, it, they're like seven feet long and they just... They just run away. It's really gross. I, um, I want to go to Alaska. We have some fans in Alaska, and they've offered to like take me out fishing, and I'm like, I might do that. That's try dope. to go uh, stay with them. One of I've the, I've always wanted to go to Alaska, man. It looks so beautiful. I know. I have too. Like ever since I was a kid, um, and Dude. also like especially like with touring because we've toured everywhere and we've been to every state, and that's one place we never got to go. So it's like. It'd be cool. It would kind of like mark off almost the entire country. Dude, um, you know how the band Portugal the Man, they're from Alaska? Yeah. I saw this interview that John Gorley recently did uh, talking about just like growing up in Alaska and all this shit. And he said that there was... So he grew up like in the middle of nowhere, like on his dad's yeah. like, I think kind of like almost like a farm type situation. And him and his brother, I think it was his brother, they uh, were on snowmobiles out in the middle of nowhere, like by the house. And something had like there ended up being like a snowstorm and they got completely lost. Like they had no yeah. idea which way to go. And they were, I think they were like, you know, 15 or 20 miles away from the house. So like they were in a really bad situation. Like yeah. they're, they're going to die if they go the wrong way, most likely. And he said all of a sudden out of nowhere, a Raven flew up over them and landed in a tree next to them and just like stared at them for a little bit. And then he started f- flying and they just started following him. And he had this feeling of like, dude, I don't know. We just got to like, we got to follow, gotta go, yeah. we got to follow this bird. And so the bird literally guided them back to his house. I don't believe it. He, here's the thing though here's the thing though that band is not on some like at least from what i understand i don't think they're like he doesn't strike me as a guy to like make up a story like that if that's real that's crazy yeah like if this bird somehow like there is sometimes like, oh, where you just like are in these situations and i'll send you the thing it's I, it sounds it very does it does sound kind of dumb me explain that but the story that he tells about this it's it was pretty crazy. This is a much weaker, watered-down version of anything like that. But there was a time where I was at, we were on tour, and I was left somewhere, and I didn't have anybody's number. Was or, this when at, in front of Joey's house? I didn't have anybody's phone. So that's another one. So we we were, I mean, me, me and Andy, you and Andy, we got like night. hammered drunk with the Expendables, and we were on the Winter Blackout tour, and we hadn't met them yet, so we knew. We're like, hey, we got to go out with them and then they'll like us. And yep. Otherwise, the tour will suck if you don't like become friends with everyone there. So we went out, we get an Uber back, but I don't have a phone and Andy's phone's dead. And we get dropped off in negative 20 degrees in Madison, Wisconsin. We're just walking around. And me and Tanner are asleep apartment complex. in my friend's apartment complex. Yeah. yeah. And so, and somehow we picked the right house and walked in the right house. Like we, we none of us knew the number. We just knew like, hey, we're going to die if we don't go inside somewhere because it's so cold. And there was one house where the gate was kind of cracked and all of them looked exactly the same. They're all the same color. And it was a giant place and we picked the right house and we slept in the right house. It was, that's kind of wild. Yeah. But there's another time where I didn't know anybody's phone number. I didn't have a phone. <laughs> and I had a station. Yeah, I was at a gas station. When we left you guys, you guys. accidentally <laughs> left me and Tanner. <laughs> we left 
Or was it me and Tanner or just me? It was you and Tanner. Me and Andy and Colby got back into the van after getting gas from the gas station. The three middle dumbest. Of, middle of nowhere. And I... Who was driving? Was I driving? I think so. Probably. I think I was driving. But I, I remember asking someone like, yo, is everyone in? And someone said, yeah. It was probably Andy that just said, yeah. Like he didn't look. Yeah. Because when we're on tour, you have to do that. Like everyone's laying in the back of the van. You don't know if they're actually yeah, in the van or not. See. So you actually have to... You have to do a head count. And someone said, yeah, or, or I just decided, yeah, everyone's in the van. So we start driving 15 minutes later, like we're 20 yeah, minutes outside going, of yeah. the gas. Like we're on the freeway at middle of nowhere. And <laughs> I get a phone call from you <laughs> and you say, do what the fuck you left us at the gas station. <laughs> It's the dumbest thing, though. And all it's of so us dumb. immediately just start laughing so fucking hard. But I, I didn't know anybody's number, and I get the phone, <laughs> and I just look at the pad of numbers, and I'm like, I went off vibe, and it was your number. Bro, how did you know? Because I knew it started with, like, the numbers that it started. I'm not going to say your phone number. But I knew, like, the first three numbers. <laughs> Do you still remember my phone number? Don't don't say it. No. Yeah, I should say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> dare me? Uh yeah, I, I think I, I I remember similar, but like back then I knew the first three numbers yeah, yeah, yeah. and the area code, and so I typed that in, and then I just like looked at these numbers, <laughs> and I was like, I have no idea, and I just guessed, or like I obviously must have known, but subconsciously. Who like, was the one? It. Who was the one not wearing shoes? I think it Tanner. was. <laughs> Tanner. Tanner just is stuck outside this fucking gas station with no shoes on because. <laughs> We left you guys there. And I'm using like some like, we're in like Kansas or something. Yeah, we're in the yeah, middle yeah. of nowhere. I'm I'm like asking this like poor Indian guy if I can like borrow his phone. He's like, no, you guys can't do that. I'm like, they just left us. They're not like, these guys are dumb. They're not going to notice for hours. <laughs> like we will be here for <laughs> hours bothering you for hours. If you don't let me use your phone, it's going to be the worst day of your fucking life because you're going to have two of us in here the entire time with you. And he's just like, okay. <laughs> so wait, so we ended up obviously driving back. We get yeah. you guys, but this is this is also it's funny. I remember it took you guys a couple hours to even laugh about it because you were so pissed off that we abandoned you. At it this was gas so station. dumb. I think it was like really cold out, and we were just like standing there, or it's like <laughs> raining. Why or the something? fuck was Tanner not wearing shoes? <laughs> probably just I think, woke up and jumped out. I think he woke up and jumped out, and I think he probably pissed outside, like behind the gas station or something. Yeah, there's a lot of gas stations that don't have Because he's bathrooms. not barefoot walking into a gas station, is he? It was Tanner on that. Was he doing that? Tanner might be on that tip at that I mean, time. I mean, you know. At that, that was, that, not now. Now, Tanner, I don't think he would, but old Tanner. Considering the way he wipes, he might be walking into gas stations barefoot. Old Tanner would do that. You know what I mean? Damn, that's really, that's that's not very um, forgivable, leaving your friends at a gas station in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, no, I never that, forget That's you. scary, though, because you really probably were thinking, I might have to sleep here tonight. I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have nobody's phone number. I have no phone. Uh, I, I don't. I have no <laughs> one to contact. Who do you call? The police? Is there an operator? <laughs> like, hi, who do you call? Hi, how can I help you? Hi, I need to make a report. My friends left me at a gas station. No, I was like, well, it's like, how do you find to get in contact with certain people if you have no way to contact them? It's really like confusing. Good thing we had service. What if we were just really... Well, it's a good thing you fucking answered a stranger's phone too. Like a weird phone number. You would though because you love talking on the phone. I love answering random phones. (laughs) Yeah, you do. Oh, Um, shit. That's a good story. I forgot about that, man. Yeah. What other like really fucked up things have we done to each other on tour? Unintentionally or I mean, it's just mostly like what we say to each other. Um... And def- this wasn't on tour, but I once ran over my friend's foot and completely shattered it. And oh, I think that's that was what I was I remember that. And I I felt the crunch under my car, and it was like a little like fleshy speed bump, and you're just like boom, yeah. boom. And I just look back, and I just start dying laughing. That and is I took awful. off, and then he drove home, and the next day he's like, I shattered my foot. For me, one of the highlights on tour will always be Andy throwing the van in reverse, going eighty down a mountain there was a time where andy shit his pants on tour and he or no he was we were all in our boxers because there's no ac <laughs> in the van it was and he middle leans of summer. over he leans over with the seat these are like very we're early in texas. days we're, we're in, in texas. texas and he's wearing boxers like 
wavy boxers and he's like watch this guys and like he was just gonna fart but he shits his hands in front of all he did, of us he threw his legs up and it was like this. this highlighter yellow disgusting i remember it being highlighter yellow it was and it like leaks through and you're like oh and we all are dying laughing but also like yelling at him so you like i think you pull over i pull over and, and he gets out of the van tanner had tanner forgot to buy socks for the tour and so he walked into a, a Target the day, like that morning, and he bought new socks, but he accidentally bought baby socks. They were like this big. <laughs> yeah. And so it's Andy gets out of the van, com- gets completely naked. We're on the and, side of the road, the side though, of so there's freeway, cars yeah. like flying by He's us. completely naked, and he just shoves like a baby, a baby <laughs> sock up into his ass crack. <laughs> like a tampon and just walks <laughs> and he's just walking on the side of the road like <laughs> naked <laughs> it's, just, it's so funny with just like this little tiny sock hanging out of his butt crack <laughs> dude the other one which i think we've talked god we can't even make it through a podcast to talk about shit uh the other the other funniest that's a bronze I, life baby dude straight up i think like when it when it all boils down to it the hardest I think I've ever laughed on tour has to be when our tour manager, Colby, started freaking out in the van. We had, <laughs> dude, this is the hardest I think I've ever laughed in the van. So we eat Chipotle. It's like 6 p.m. Sun. It's already dark, and we're in Colorado. It's fucking freezing. There's snow everywhere. Yeah. It's literally like probably 15 degrees outside. They were closing roads because it they was were, so Yeah, busy. and there was a lot of snow, and we were in this kind of like, I don't know, just a little like ski town probably. And we leave Chipotle and like, dude, minutes after we leave Chipotle, Colby, our, our tour manager is in the back of the van and he just goes, guys, pull over. And we're like, dude, we just fucking left. Like we have to still drive a couple hours. Like what are you talking about? We're not pulling over. He's like, dude, st- stop. I'm not kidding. Pull over right now. Pull over. <laughs> and he's like emergency mode. So we pull over and we're in this neighborhood. Like we're in the neighborhood next to Chipotle. And the neighborhood's completely blocked off because of ice. So you're not supposed to go in there. And we have a 16 passenger van and a trailer. It's yeah. dangerous. So, so so Colby doesn't even put a sweatshirt on. He's he's wearing he's just wearing a t-shirt. Cuz it's not cold in the van. And he runs out. We open the double doors, the van. He jumps out and he runs down a hill. Down a hill but can't find anywhere to shit. So like he's he's in panic mode. He's like, dude, I'm going to shit myself. Pull over, pull over. He gets out. And what from what I remember, wasn't he in someone's yard? So he he, he ran down the hill <laughs> and we lost sight of him no, no, for a while. For, for a minute. But yeah. So he ends up like slipping, falling, gets up and has to shit in someone's front yard. <laughs> Like no, we saw this. We saw him doing it. No, we didn't. Yes, it was, we, it was like went down this hill that he was like pretty far out there. I remember just seeing his shadow disappear because it was pitch black, <laughs> okay. so we couldn't see anything because he was like. I thought we saw shit. That, that makes it even funnier. Yeah, so we just see his dis- like we see his shadow just go into the darkness, and he's like <laughs> freaking out. He we watched him. We did watch him fall down in the <laughs> yeah. ice. I believe, and we were all just laughing so yeah. hard. And he comes back and he's like, "Oh, sorry, guys." He's like, my stomach is so fucked up. He's like, I think it's something I ate. And we're like, well, what'd you, what'd you eat today? And then he takes us through his day of food. Dude, it was every single candy that exists. He's like, well, I think I started out with like a Mike and Ike's. And then I went Arby's? over to... Arby's? He ate Arby's in the Arby's, morning? McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> and then Chipotle. Which is like hard a to bunch do. of candy. Oh, and so much candy. Colby's like, like tiny seven too. Seven different types of candy. And none of us eat fast food, really. And like on tour, we never do. And so he was like going out of his way to eat at all these fast food spots when we were all going yeah. other places. And um, yeah, it was the funniest mix of stuff. It was just like, I think I had a bag of hot Cheetos, four bags of Skittles, like all of this shit. And, so, like, and he had to just no wipe his ass in the wonder. freezing cold with like Chipotle napkins. <laughs> it was so funny. That's hilarious. I just remember I, was, I could, I was dying, dude. We dude, were crying. That laughing. was one of the funniest things I think ever yeah. for us. That was a good one. I think we're gonna we're gonna keep it a little short shorter today. today. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's let's nip this one in the bud again. Thank you everybody for yep your support on our new single "Good Time." Um, yeah, man. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next week on the Camp Podcast. Peace out. Peace. Peace.